Eric Smith here with Oroville Area Chamber of Commerce and of course this is Museum Weekend. This is our last museum here at the Oroville Nature Center. I want to point out where it's located. We're right across from the DWR Fish Hatchery and the Diversion Pool. This is just such a beautiful site with a lot of rich history which we're going to get into in just a couple of minutes. Uh, the docents did want me to point out a couple of interesting things. First of all, we have Indian grinding rocks right here. And then we're going to make our way up the stairs here to this bathhouse. We also have a native plant pollinating garden of all the natural native plants here of Northern California. We have a manzanita plant. And then there's also one other very important plant that was pointed out to me that we're going to talk about as we go up the stairs. This here is a buckeye, which is a fascinating tree. Uh, everything, of course, right now with the springtime is coming out. And this uh, vine plant here is very, very important to a particular uh, swallowtail butterfly, which is nearing extinction. And so uh, one of our naturalists is pointing out that in preservation of all these native plants, that it's just so, so important as we uh, maintain the, the history and the vitality of the Orville area. Well, with no further ado, we're gonna meet a couple of docents over here. So come on with me. Good afternoon, ladies. Hi. So we have Sue and Becky, who are a couple of our docents here that keep this place up, this facility. And just talking about docents, I just want to point out that we're always in the hunt for new docents. Yeah. It takes a lot of work and a lot of love to keep and, these places up. And, and you, it's a lot of fun. And you too have done an amazing job, of course, with all the other docents. And we're always in the in the hunt for uh, for people to come and join the party. Yes. So right. Sue's gonna give us a tour of the and the, some history of the bathhouse. I am welcome. This is uh, called the bathhouse originally, and it it's also called the Chinese rock house. Something about that. I didn't know for years that it was not Chinese related. So, in 1935, the WPA workforce came and built this, and it's built out of green stone which is a natural rock in this area that they've resourced to build it. And it's been here since then. The Feather River at one time had a beautiful beach around this curve. And in 1935, people came from all over Northern California, San Francisco, Sacramento, to swim. But when you swim, you need to put your suit on and then take it off and, and wash and reclothe. So, let's go inside and see how you can know it's the bathhouse. Welcome to the Feather River Nature Center. Okay. Please come into this room with me. The walls are about a foot thick, so it's very cool in the winter and it stays fairly cool in the summer. But if you will look up here, you will see the sprinkler heads of the bathhouse and some on the other side and the piping. There was a door for women to come in on one side and a door for the men on the other. And this was cut in to make it the museum so that it all comes together. And you'll notice in here, there are some uh, taxidermied animals. Most of what you will see in the museum are natural things from California. Uh, we have other things that have been donated. The paintings were done by Rex Burks, who is now deceased. But he and Peter Mackey had the original idea to turn this derelict old building into a nature museum. And in 1937-39, a flood came on our Feather River. We have them periodically. 
wiped out the stone walls outside, washed away the sands, and then the roof, roof fell in. The windows were all broken out. The ceramic uh, Spanish type uh, tiles on the roof were destroyed and there was nothing but the walls here until about 1996. Now this was in 1938, this was declared the first um, public park in Oroville, California. Uh -huh. And it just sat. The, the, the weeds grew up, the homeless moved in, the animals moved in. And in 1996, 97, Peter Mackey and Rex Burris had this idea, gathered a bunch of volunteers, pulled the city in to help clean up, and donations to fix all of this up. Now this board here, we put in in 2013 in honor of my husband, John Heath, and uh, Rex Burris did all the drawings for it that gives you the history of this area. The people that are here are docents that were founders, and you see some of their names up here. And then this is the history of this whole area. The ancient Native American bridge across the river, the floods, the earthquakes, and things down to 2016. And on the right-hand side, and we add to this every couple of years, are all the people who in some way, businesses, individuals, labor, materials, and time to come down here and rebuild this and to make it uh, a viable part of our Oroville history. You know, as we're doing these virtual tours, one thing that you find is that the history is, uh, in Oroville, is so rich. And there, there is a whole group of people that have worked so hard at preserving the history. And this is just such a great treasure. Bring your children out. You know, when we uh, get back to being open again, when we get past COVID, of course, uh, but to just uh, come in and be able to discover and appreciate the richness of our area and the history that's here. Uh, this is what an amazing our thing. Our visitors and, come from all over and people that come in a lot of times would ask, have you been here before? And they'll say, no, and I grew up here and I went to school here and I've never been here. But we're not open 24-7, so it's, it's a little bit of limitation. Some of our collections um, are newspaper articles from way back when, uh, pictures of what this looked like when we first started, after we got all of the uh, overgrowth finished up, before windows and roof went on, and some of the nice coverage we had in the different things. This area right here, it was Native American and they did a, their first salmon ceremony down on the river. Whoever caught the first salmon, that started a whole celebration for the Native Americans. We have the salmon festival dinner on the uh, fourth weekend of uh, September when we have the salmon festival. The, the rock show is that time. So one's the third weekend, one's the fourth weekend. But um, our fundraiser has been to sell tickets to a dinner on Friday night to support this. That's the only fundraiser that well, we have. Well, we're very hopeful that this year we're going to be able to do that on Friday, the fourth uh, Friday of September. And our city and our community so supports that, that we are very thankful that we can replace or fix up or repair or add into our area around here. So the Salmon Festival is one of the things that the community helps us with. You will see some Native American displays here. They remain and support very much our Native Museum here, Native uh, Natural thing. Um, and we have some pelts and different things that are here to bring the children in from the schools. Yeah. And so we have periodically had anywhere from six to ten groups come to visit here. And when Rex Burris was alive, he would take them up the road and tell, show them the plants, the poison oak, what it's called. He was a very he was a naturalist. 
and he was very, very fond. This was his his project kind of thing. And you'll see up above there, this room is called the Rex Burris Gallery. And I think that's so important with our children, our schools, and just all the work that you, you get the docents do, and then passing that legacy on to the kids. You know, so it's so important to expose them to this so that they have an appreciation of all the nature and the natural wonder that Orville has. You're right, you're right. And I taught for many years, and I can show a movie, I, I, I whatever, but you bring in hands-on, or you take them to where they can touch it and pick it up and feel it and, and learn something right directly. You've got the kinesthetic, the tactile, the audio, the visual, the whole thing to kind of put it in their brain to maybe spark that curiosity that and children hopefully they'll have. become a docent one day, and, right? And yes, and, and yes. And keep the legacy yes. alive. Yeah. We're down to just a few docents, and museums in Oroville are just awesome. So I can't think of any other town, big town, metropolitan area, that has five, six different museums. I mean, we even have the Butte County Historical Society and stuff here. And so, you know, it's, it's an awesome gift to our people here. And the more docents that are involved, the more we can be open. Um, four people can't keep it open every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, throughout the whole month, all day. Just not possible for us with family life. So um, anybody with an interest in any one of the museums would be more than welcome. So there's your invitation. Volunteer. Yeah, get involved. And we have that. And Becky is very versed on that and very promoting on that. And Joan outside is a fairly new one, maybe the last three or four years she's been involved. But boy, just bought into it, just really embraced it and enjoys yeah. it. So this is a place of historical um, inference with the um, Native American background and some natural things that have been donated or collected. Um, I'd like to take you into the other room yeah, now. Let's do that. And Becky is going to tell you about many of the things here and the docent program that we have and how you can, you know, be involved. So, Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. It's so nice to have this opportunity to share both sides of this tiny, tiny monster museum. Uh, I call it a monster because uh, when you're working in it and, and um, taking care of things and sharing them with the young families that come through here, it's like, oh, we hardly have time and can we keep the attention? And But yet the young ones are very attentive. And so in this room, it's the touch and the hold and the feel that, that you can experience, which makes it come alive for the children. Um, if you'll follow me along here, we have a wonderful library that has just been revamped with the latest and the oldest and the, with the what you have of, of, of information from rocks to flowers to uh, the animal life that does live in this area. The animal habitat is, is produced here and the children, oh, they look up and they say, oh, I've seen one of those. and. And it just brings it right into um, a receivable, a receivable a venue. This is our bird sanctuary, so to speak, uh, on this side of the showers, shower stalls, um, with the, every nest in the world you could imagine being in this area. There's even one shower head left coming out of the wall there from the, the ladies' side of the of the facility. The bird life is all here and and the little scoundrels that run through the forest are here and the children can pat them and feel how warm their coats are probably in the winter and running through the forests. They can touch them, pick them up and hold them and then they can see what what has to happen, uh, what happens when they can't live anymore. It's very basic. Um, we get into uh, Feather Falls, the original, one of the original photographs of Feather Falls coming down here, along with all of the um, skeletons that have been found in the, in the woods. 
beautiful, heavy rocks. The children can feel what a rock feels like when you can hardly pick it up and, and how shiny it is. The rusty, rusty, dusty things that get found in the bottom of the river are all here and saved. And, and you wonder, gosh, what could have been something like this? You know, what could have done that? It's incredible. The sounds, the sounds, the clinks, the, it's, it's all right here for them to touch and pick up. And then parents can be with them and read the various articles and explain the pictures. Here are some of the river uh, workings when the river was a big wide river along the dredging. And there we have little tables where they can sit and draw and color. We have crayons and um, paper that, that the children can put their experiences down. Up above, we have the beautiful uh, feathered friends of ours and a feathered friend that became a meal for another friend, four-legged friend there. Well, Becky, I certainly, you know, we just can just sense the passion that you and she Thank have. You. Yes. And, 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 then, and again, it gets transmitted to the kiddos because really, I think this, this nature center really just, again, it's a keeper of all the history and the wonder that's here in Orville. And then Thank just, you. you know, transmitting that passion to the kids, which is, again, you. you know, so, so vital to our community. And so we're so appreciative of the great work that you, you all do here. Well, so, being a docent is, is, is not a hard thing to be because there's so much reciprocated uh, from the audience to the docents, and we're all one. Super. Well, if you want to know how to get connected with the Nature Center, you can call the city. Again, we'll have that contact information. Uh, we're just uh, so excited about this opportunity with a museum weekend, virtual tours. So it's been almost a, a year since this whole COVID shutdown thing. And yes. so this is just a way to kind of reintroduce uh, all the treasures here in Orville. And we're appreciative of you tuning in and watching this. Yes, thank you uh, for your time. But uh, And soon you'll be able to get out and bring your kids and have a real life hands-on experience with all the critters and things that touch and feel. When you hear that we're open, we'll be here for you. Thank Enjoy. you.